Namaste, my name is Pavitra Chakravarti and I'm with Kalyan Vishwanathan and Srinath Chakravarti and we're discussing Reza Aslan's Believer that aired on CNN last Sunday. So Kalyanji, Srinath made uh, a very valid uh, observation I thought where he basically um, said that the emphasized the dynamic nature of Jadi Varna. In other words, it evolves as your situation uh, changes. Right. Can you elaborate? Yeah, this is a very important uh, uh, idea that uh, Hindus must understand, you know. See, Jatis can rise and fall on the Varna scale and they have throughout our history. See, for example, if you are born in a Brahmana Jati, mm -hmm. it's merely a starting point. But if you don't do anything that, uh, that, uh, that is, uh, that is uh, sort of conforms to the dharma of a brahmana, that is, right. you don't do the duties, you don't perform the, the duties of a brahmana, in time you will fall from the brahmana jati, in time. Now what does in time mean? Okay? Mm -hmm. In time means across generations, it will take several generations, a jati can fall. Mm. For example, when Kshatriya Jatis were displaced from power, mm. what do they become? They, bec they become Shudras. In some cases, they become Dalits also, untouchables also. I will give you an example. Okay. Recently in Tamil Nadu, there was this politics around, uh, uh, you know, the succession to Jailalitha, right? And the, for a brief period, the Chief Minister was supposed to be Mr. Panir Selvam, O Panir Selvam. And uh, his wife's name is Vijayalakshmi Nachiar, Panir Selvam's wife. Okay. Panir Selvam belongs to the Tevar community mm. and Vijayalakshmi Nachiar belongs to the Nachiar community. They are two jatis. Mm. Now, if you go back in history, just 200 years, in the late 1700s, the Tevar communities were ruling various parts of Tamil Nadu. They were kings. Mm. They were Kshatriyas. Today they are considered OBCs. Mm. Okay. So in 200 years, they went from Kshatriyas to OBCs. Now the OBC, by the way, is not a classification that is intrinsic to India. S a scheduled caste and other backward caste, mm. a backward caste. These are classifications that the British created during their, they started in the 1871 census and kept it up 1881, 1891, on and on. Right. So now, India has assimilated these characterizations of peoples as though they are static in nature, which they are not. Mm. So just like the Kshatriyas, the Nachiyars and the Tevars, they fell from being Kshatriyas down to uh, Shudras and other characters. In just eight generations? In, in, in a few generations. but. Electoral politics, the, the electoral realities of democracy, but have brought them back into Kshatriya status. You know, they, I mean, the Tevas have a have a say now. Mm. Even that uh, Sashikala in Tamil Nadu is from the Tevar community. So, in other words, right, the empowerment, you know, people in the so-called lower caste communities gaining wealth, and becoming vicious, gaining power, and becoming Kshatriya, and gaining knowledge and wisdom, becoming Brahmanas. Is, has always been a possibility mm. in Hindu society. It perhaps was not so fast. It didn't happen in one generation. It took two, three, four generations for these right. rises and falls to happen. But the dynamism of the Jati system was always there. And Jatis that got depressed in a certain era have risen in other eras mm. and have fallen in other eras. Therefore, to look at these communities as static and they, they rise and fall through their own effort and through the effort of circumstances and so on. So bottom line is these, this is a dynamic system not uh, to be confused with the static construct that British understanding imposed upon the system. Right. And to a to large measure, Hindus themselves are very confused about this. Mm. This they think, you know, once you are born in a particular caste, you are, you know. So I mean, let let's look at this. Many Brahmanas, many Brahmins today, what are they doing? Are they pursuing Brahmin dharmas? If you ask the question, no, they are not. They are software engineers. They are in the IT world. They are doctors. 
you know they are they are doing things which are not exactly consonant with the dharma as articulated by the dharma shastras okay so what will happen it is guaranteed that in generations in two three generations those children grandchildren etc will be indistinguishable from vaishyas and shudras that is guaranteed simultaneously if a shudra or a dalit or an untouchable whatever we may call that person if he or she pursues you know say for example an entrepreneurial career and make a lot of wealth well they uh, they are sent to the state of vaishyas they study sanskrit and they this is called sanskritization by the way in a sociological context written widely by a professor by the name mn srinivas this is a very dynamic Mm. dynamic process and we need to understand it in its dynamic reality rather than its sort of stratified or fossilized mm. perspective that western academia's uh, representation uh, delivers uh, to us that was Shri, do you have anything to add to this? No, I just meant to say that you know the framework of Jati Varna within the Dharmic context is where Hinduism draws the maximum uh, benefit out of it. And, <coughs> and I, I want to say that because, in theory, Jati and Varna can be applied to anybody because Jati is a species and Varna is an ability. So, mm. what is Reza Aslan's Jati and Varna? Reza Aslan's Jati is someone who is. born in the in the, in the Iranian peninsula central uh, heartland of Iran he descends from ancient persians etc other is jadi he, he can never change that it's like dna what is his varna today he has reached some place where he has become a kshatriya attacking other religions faiths he's you know immersing himself in this actor that activity he also vaishya may my point out because he accumulated enough wealth to be a wealth interest and, an, inf- and yeah an influence in, in these two areas so everybody has jati varna but the jati varna within the framework of dharma is what hinduism values and that's another thing we need to understand right? but shrinath i think uh, you know reza aslan never took the trouble to understand caste system in an intrinsic jati varna system but shrinath has done him the big favor of actually casting him in a jati varna mold so <laughs> you know this is the true nature of hinduism we treat everyone within a very very fair and just equitable system So Kalyan I have to bring up a question that may be not very politically correct but leading to what you said about static versus dynamic isn't it unfortunate that brahmanas are such a such a maligned uh, jati now yeah. in other words they basically preserved our vedas and our, all of our scriptures when at, at a time when you know the 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 invasions and just everything done to thwart the system and yeah. to basically make it extinct yeah. they took tremendous personal risk to themselves mm. they they ingested and they they assimilated the vedam and all the other sacred scriptures and passed it down generations such that now we still have yeah. some of them left over as opposed to certain civilizations that have been wiped out like yeah. the assyrians for example right Right. So isn't it unfortunate that the very people who sacrifice their lives for such a noble deed yeah. are so maligned now Yeah So it's very important for us to understand see Hinduism itself as a whole Hindus as a whole are a soft target mm. The Brahmins within Hinduism are an even softer target yeah. Why because they will not respond they will not uh, attack you in return they will not uh, pick up arms or do anything to defend themselves they just sort of brush it off and go about their own lives which makes them a soft target see reza aslan it's important to understand could not have made a similar show on islam that he did on hinduism if he had done a similar show on islam similar show on islam there would be an enormous reaction you know even leading to potential personal threat to reza aslan absolutely because of the the oversight that islam exercises on scholars around the world that's right on the other hand hindus exercise no oversight on scholarship on hinduism around the world it's very critical to understand mm. this yes 
our swamis, <coughs> gurus, acharyas, yogis, you know, our sannyasis, they do their work, their dharma, they, they do their dharmic activities to the best of their abilities, but they exercise no control, no influence, no oversight on what is legitimately, you know, considered a narrative about Hinduism. Nor do we have scholars in the academia who we could consider as, you know, legitimate overseers of the narratives about Hinduism. Right. So, we do not have anybody. You see, so in a, in a sense, it is roughly equivalent to this, just like uh, Western uh, companies are outsourcing IT development and software maintenance to India. <laughs> Hindus have outsourced the study of Hinduism to Westerners. <laughs> You know, our, and our Brahmanas, the Brahmins, who for thousands upon thousands of years were custodians of the spiritual and intellectual heritage of the Hindu traditions, in the last 200 years or so, for various reasons, have ceased to be custodians. And I would. Uh, gently make one criticism about our some of our own fellow Brahmins, uh, you know, who are uh, uh, very ritualistic, you know, they go to temples, they do a lot of puja and they do a lot of, uh, uh, you know, japa and yajna and homas and all this. You know, it, I mean, I would ask them, do you re realize you are custodians of an enormous tradition, a, a, a tradition of spiritual and intellectual, mm. a body of knowledge that is so vast. And uh, preserving and passing on, transmitting that knowledge, that, that heritage to future generations is was so much a part of who you are as a Brahmana, right. If you do not understand that, no amount of, uh, I am afraid, doing rituals and pujas is going to help, is going to help because you see, Brahmanas were custodians of these traditions, these knowledge traditions, intellectual and spiritual traditions, not for themselves, but for the whole of Hindu society. Right. You know, just like Kshatriyas were the kings and rulers and commanders of armies, not for themselves for the whole of Hindu society, okay. So, this was the interdependent nature of what, what, what it was to be a Brahmana. Okay. But if you lose that context and a Brahmana says now that my job is to be an IT professional or a doctor or whatever, I make a lot of money, but do a few rituals on the side just to sort of keep my personal family traditions going, I am afraid it is simply insufficient in the face of the extraordinary challenges we face like Reza Aslan and CNN in this instance. So, Kalyan, mm. <coughs> the thing is people can't change the lifestyle or the fact that globalization, industrialization has vastly changed the landscape, yes, not only of, uh, of the western world, but to a large extent India. Yes. So, we can't expect people to give that up and, and revert back to how life uh, was, you know, several yeah. uh, generations ago. Yeah. But I think the point you're trying to make is that in addition to that, in addition to the ritualistic aspect, enough time needs to be devoted towards learning our real history, learning things that we should take pride in and not run away from or be apologetic for and be able to combat such attacks in the future because Reza Aslan is today. We will have 10 Reza Aslans and we do not have sufficient uh, firepower on our side. Yeah. So, basically we need to build that arsenal of intellectual Kshatriyas at this point. Yeah, yeah it is a very important point, okay? very important point. It is very difficult to turn the clock back and go back to an earlier era when uh, you know we, we, we completely recover the Brahminical traditions number one. Okay. But at the same time, the the metaphor and idiom of the modern world has also changed, has transformed in the, in, in the sense that today to enter into a discourse in the public square requires you to be an authority, mm. an intellectual authority. <coughs> that means you have to be, you have to acquire a PhD, you have to have written books, you have to, you have to be a legitimate academic 
within an academic environment. Mm -hmm. See, I, we, I want to caution us against using the phrase intellectual kshatriya very loosely. Because uh, the, you know, it, while it is necessary to, to, to do, to protest and tweets, do tweeting <laughs> and putting Facebook posts and it is necessary. I am not saying that it is not necessary. But I do believe that is not sufficient in terms of what it is to have the, as you put it, the intellectual firepower, which comes from learning, from deep learning. You know, so an academic who is deeply grounded in a sampradaya, has got deep affinities with certain gurus and acharyas within that sampradaya, but also has academic credentials, mm. has got a PhD, is deeply learned, studied, has studied Western thought, Western philosophy, theologies, Christian theology, Islamic theology, right. studied Marxism, but has also studied Bhagavad Gita, Brahma Sutras, Vedas, Upanishads, has studied Yoga Sutras, I mean uh, the enormous corpus of such scholars mm. we have to produce and we have to support. If we do not do it, then we will be hard pressed to, for example, we cannot create, why cannot we create a show of our own on CNN? Why cannot we, a, 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 an introduction to Hinduism, 60 minutes presented by Hindu scholars? You know, why, why do we have to f be on this reactive back foot? Right. Where Reza Aslan produces a show and then now we are so, um, you know, intensely troubled by the show, <laughs> right? What will it take? So therefore, you know, even if for those brahmanas, brahmanas who have taken to other professions, you know, like uh, doctors, engineers, IT professionals and so on, I would say they should consider, you know, putting aside some kind of support for scholars who are in the academia, who are trying to do this, straddle this these spaces and e eke out a life and be a legitimate scholar. Mm. And we need to pr create a, a large community of such scholars and we need to create institutions which can create these scholars. So these are very challenging and tough problems for us to take on, but we have to do it and this is the way forward for our community as a whole. So that would be my submission to the Brahmanas, you know. And, and you want to mention the, the DCF uh, website or contact where they can get this information? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I would look forward to the day when a group of Hindus academics get together and put on a show, you know, and not just remain on YouTube and on Facebook. The a mainstream show on CNN, on Hinduism, by Hindus. That would be a milestone for our community. So with those words, Tatastu, let, let us hope that in a few years or at least very soon, we will see that happen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I was with uh, Kalyan and uh, Srinath, and we were discussing Reza Aslan's uh, Believer that aired on CNN uh, last Sunday. Thank you. And uh, thank you to Desi Plaza for Absolutely. Uh, hosting us. Shri Krishna, Puttaparthi and Desi Plaza, Dhanyavadaha. Thank you so much.